welcome to the podcast. We've got Iliato back again Woo. from last week, <laughs> the marketing Thanks, master, man. the sales master. And uh, you had to give me a minute, man. I'm running behind. And uh, I just got back from the gym. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Orange Theory? Have you ever done that before? I, I've, I've seen them, but I've never been there. It's a, it's a really cool kind of gimmicky type of workout, free plug for Orange Theory, where you get your heart rate into this orange zone. And if you get 12 minutes in that orange zone, it creates like this afterburn where you're burning these calories like after your, at, for the next 24 hours. So it becomes a game of like, get your heart rate up and then recover, get your heart rate up and then recover. There's weights, there's treadmill. It's pretty cool. It's, you know what I like about working out is there is that. I don't have to think about what I'm doing. I just do what I'm told to do. It's different every day. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's pretty cool. What do you do? So, well, that's interesting. I've seen them a lot of, I've seen a lot of the uh, Orange Theory like locations, but I've never known that, that that's what it's about. So the whole theory is as long as you get your 12 minutes, it activates some kind of biological response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, yep. man. Yeah. And I don't know how accurate the science is for that, but uh, mm -hmm. it's, I definitely feel better every single time I go. I'm really? I'm happy I went. Yeah, interesting, man. I definitely try it. I, I definitely like high intensity stuff. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Pavel Tetzelin. Mm -mm. So he's like a master of sports slash trainer. He was in the KGB in the Soviet Union. He's been on Joe Rogan's podcast and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and he he does predominantly strength training. And the idea is again using your muscles intensely it triggers a whole bunch of metabolic changes when you mm -hmm. use your muscles in a very intense way, instead of just lifting weights to get a pump. Yeah. It's like you're fully engaged. It increases neural connections, uh, BDNF brain drive, neurotrophic, neurotropic factor, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, that stuff has, has, that's pretty much what I do. And I really do it not so much for f like fitness, but just for mental stuff, you know, like yeah. you work, all day <laughs> you're, you're about to lose your mind it's sort of like an outlet but yeah uh, yeah yeah that's the last reason i do it because i feel better and yeah. uh because it's good it's like really therapeutic and yep. your body you know i take your car like if you think about a car that sits out on the street and it doesn't get driven for six months mm -hmm. it looks like shit in six months it looks like it's been there for 10 years leaves yeah. are stuck to it tires are flat it's all rusted out filthy yep. dirty Oddly enough, if you drive that same car every day for six months, it looks better than it, it had just sat there. Yeah. And I think, you know, our bodies are kind of like that too. They need to be used. I think any method works, CrossFit, high intensity, running, jo like just do something, you know, yeah, just do, note, do something. But that's cool, man. I think today we're going to talk a little bit about automations. I know automations in marketing have become the backbone of organizations. Uh, they're they've made it so that these mundane tasks can happen very rapidly and very automatically. So you don't mm -hmm. have to have an employee responsible for them. Yep. And we'll, we'll free plug Zapier because it, they are the king. Like when you need something automated, they have the most integrations. They have the easiest, easiest to set up, easy to use, easy to integrate. And uh, so, yeah, what, just so we can kind of frame it a little bit better, what is an automation? Like what will we use an automation for in your words? So an automation is basically when you have a, it could be any activity that you do manually. Like let's say somebody emailed you or somebody got input as a lead in your CRM or something like that, where you need mm -hmm. to update a record or you need to add it to another database or another software. It's just basically lots of data that needs to be shuffled around that you are doing manually or messaging people even, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially you can have robots do it. You can have something like Zapier or Zapier, or however it's pronounced, do that for you. Um, and it's really a must just because there's so many activities and there's so many tools that businesses rely on just to do marketing. Like mm -hmm. the level yeah. of sophistication for running a business has changed dramatically. You can't just do what was working 30 or 40 years ago. Now you're using you know, retargeting and newsletters and CRMs mm -hmm. and all this stuff and, you know, I've, I've consulted some companies and they have dedicated staff just doing a bunch of manual mm -hmm. data entry. Like that's a whole salary of stuff you're doing. Yeah. Or usually if it's a smaller business, it's the business owner doing it themselves. Yeah. Automation is a must. I mean, it's the best way you're going to get an, RO, an ROI and keep your organization lean and not be dedicating or allocating time to lower level activity that needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is about automations is like one of the challenges that I've run into is 
integrating automations and making that transition. So you build a product, you develop it, you don't have it built out in automations, but you have this customer base or this infrastructure built, and you then have to switch over to use the automations now. You know, so like in the most basic form, and I'm going to actually back up a little bit. An automation is, it could be something very complex and intricate, or it could be something very simple. For example, somebody comes to your Shopify store and they enter all of their information and then they get a receipt email. Those are the most common type of automation would be like a transactional type automation where they get an email that says, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for buying. Here's a coupon code. Refer a friend, right? That's a very very simple automation. Now you can chain automations to do multiple things. So that sign up email or the thank you email could then trigger another email based on what that customer bought to send him an email or a text or an opt-in or some other piece of promotional material. You know what I mean? So like they're in their most simple form, I a thousand percent agree with you. In their most simple form, automations have to be used. You have to automate things. The interesting thing now with Zap is that it's so easy to automate things now because of automations that you have a starting point of knowing something is going to be automations and is driving innovation to do more creative things. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. It's really cool. So how, why don't you walk me through the automations you use in some of the companies you consult? Because you consult with lots of companies. You do a lot of lead gen, a lot of marketing. Uh, you've got call center, how, walk me through one of the automations that's most valuable to you that you use. Yeah. So one of the main things is when you get a lead, you want to reach out to them like fairly soon within minutes or less, right? Less yeah. than five minutes or within a minute if you can. Um, and there's, there's some marketing stats, like every additional minute you wait, the drop off is exponential, mm -hmm. right? Like people felt some sort of way when they contacted you, when they were looking at your service, people's yeah. moods change from one minute to the next. You need to get them while they're hot, right? Yep. Yep. So one of the things that we use, for example, when we do email marketing campaigns is, and let's say I have like 30 or 40 email inboxes, mm -hmm. right? So I can't be looking at 30 or 40 inboxes on my phone all the time, but I need to know when somebody responds in real time or my team needs to know. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we do is email response comes in, we send a, a, um, a zap or an automation or notification to our Slack channel, which is a group messaging. And it doesn't have to be Slack if you're using something else. Mm -hmm. And then so like somebody from my sales team or myself is going to say, hey, Ali just came through and he just sent an email. Yeah. And then we respond quickly or we call him immediately and we say, hey, listen, I saw you responded. Just wanted to give you a quick call, see if we can get a time on blah, 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 book yeah. that appointment. So for timing, that's one of the big uh, zaps that we use. Um, and the other stuff is just, I mean, the day-to-day -day stuff is automating Google Sheets with other things, like the mm -hmm. way we, we manipulate and use data or integrate data across yeah. uh, other platforms. What about you, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, no, that's really interesting. It's a very, very basic workflow. It almost like you, you wouldn't even be able to live without it. Like, how would we do these things today, you know? It's like, remember back in my day when we had to, you know, <laughs> we, the, the, <laughs> the horror story about how bad it was, you know, 20 years ago. <laughs> right. I, I use that. We have probably about... 10,000 automations that run every single month. Whoa. And we we did the manpower on that one time on how long it would have taken the an, an actual person to do every single task that was performed. And it was something like six or 7,000 hours. It was insane amount of time that would have taken a human to do that, right? So uh, we use... We book appointments. We're one of the companies that I have, we book appointments. We have several, five different sources for those appointments. Mm -hmm. And so it might be digitally, it might be email, it might be phone calls, it might be newspaper print ads. And we needed a centralized way to be able to instantly locate any appointment that we scheduled with who and for whom we scheduled it. Mm -hmm. Several hundred a day that we schedule. So we have automation set up to go from uh, the booking software in these various channels from when that person clicks, yes, I want an appointment. It overlays those onto a master sheet. And then we can actually see every single appointment. And we know based on another automation we set up, which source that appointment 
came from. So it's like creating our database for us in real time. And you can just sit there and look at the sheet and you see them roll in every day, ping, 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 ping. You know what's going on. And it's also become a metric for us to see when we run test campaigns. We'll run a test campaign and we want to see in real time, are we getting appointments scheduled? So it's allowed us to, to be able to innovate and adapt and send out these pilot campaigns. And then we look at the master sheet rather than all of the infrastructure that's built out for that particular program. And we just look and see. At one point, it was actually funny early on when I, and this sounds, if, if you're listening, you think this sounds complicated. It actually is. You, you, not anybody can just go and do that without getting frustrated. You need, if you need automations, and you probably do if you're in the digital game, you need to get this mastered. You either need to have somebody that does it or take the time to learn it yourself. This is one of those things where you talk about investing in yourself. Most people think of investing in yourself as, spending money going to conferences or upgrading your clothing or getting a better website that is investing in yourself but when you add a skill set something when you add a skill set like learning automations of which the foundation of every multi-million dollar company is built you've just increased your value and made yourself more valuable and you and once you learn it once you're good at it in any industry so at the very least you need to find somebody to do automations for you and uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I, would, I, I would just add to that. You know, the ROI on automation is, it's such a quick win. I mean, it's instantaneous. It's not like something you need to wait weeks or months. It is like from one day to the next, you were spending a ton of time or your staff was spending a ton of time doing something. And then the next day you're just not. Yeah. It's just learning that yep. learning curve of figuring out how to do it. And it's not complex. I mean, it's not, it's not easy, but it's not something you need a, you know, a master's degree in. Yeah. Uh, either you can hire somebody or you can look at a few tutorials just to understand you might not even know what you can automate. There's yeah. probably things that if you've never done automations, you don't even know that you can automate them. Yep. So it doesn't hurt. Take 30 minutes, speak to somebody and say, hey, can this be automated? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You don't know what you don't know. And yep. you know what? I'll actually go ahead and make an offer. I'll, I'll go ahead and make an offer right now for those of you that hear this and you need help with your automations, get in touch with me. I'll do it absolutely free. I'm going to tell you what automations you need. I'll tell you uh, how to use them. I'll even program them for you. One-time offer, absolutely free.